I have a great project for you. It is the Java FX Fuel Pump Simulator. It has a much larger code base than other programs we have worked on. There are nine Java source files. Additionally, there is a folder in documents that contains a log file and two image files for the store and pump. What's cool about this project is that you don't need to write any code. Your task is to analyze the code and determine which parts are used when executing various sections of the program. This is almost like a scavenger hunt where you are given a list of things to find. In another part of the lab assignment, you are asked to identify what needs to be done to modify the program to make the pump deliver fuel as either gallons or liters. All of the Java code and images are provided if you wish to build and run the program, but it is not necessary to build the program to complete your lab assignment. You are only asked to look at the code, not build it. Here is a list and short description of each file. Java FX Fuel Pump Project calls methods to create all objects. Fuel menu.java constructs menu bar at the top. Pump.java constructs pumps, delivers fuel, logs transactions. Store.java constructs the store, displays and retrieves prices. EditPrices.java provides a dialog box to edit and save prices. LogFile.java creates, displays and updates logfile.txt. Dialogbox.java makes a variety of dialog boxes for the project. Print.java prints the log file dot text or transaction receipt. About.java displays info about the program and instructions. Before we get into the specifics of the project, let's look at how the program works. As you watch this part of the video, try to think of how the different parts of the program have been built and which of the Java files would have the code for each part of the demo. Here is a store that has prices posted for two grades of gasoline and a price for diesel. When a customer wants to make a purchase, cash needs to be deposited at the store. The customer can then select a fuel grade at the pump and then click the start button on the pump. text box for deposit is disabled. Fuel is pumped, showing the amount of sale and the volume delivered in gallons. When the desired amount of fuel has been dispensed based on the deposit, the text on the pump's button changes to sale complete and change displayed in the window shows 0.00. Let's try it again. Click the clear button to start a new sale. The pump is reset. The deposit and change displays are cleared. Enter a new deposit. Select a fuel grade. Click the start button. This time, see the text on the button on the pump has changed from start to stop. Click the stop button. Click the stop button before all of the deposit has been used. Look at the display at the store. Now we see some change. There is a menu bar at the top of the program that has options for File, View, Edit, and Help. When File is clicked, the only option in the drop-down is Exit. That can be activated using the mouse or the hotkey Alt-X. Hotkeys are also known as key accelerators. They are very useful when a mouse or tracking device is not available. They are also a requirement to make a program ADA compliant. The View menu has options for View Sales, View Print Receipt, and View Print Log File. The three dots after each option are known as ellipses. A dialog box is displayed when any of these options is selected either by the mouse or its associated hotkey. 
the dialog boxes are typed modal, which means that no user actions are permitted on the other parts of the program until the dialog box is closed. View Sales displays the most recent sale and the total of all sales of the current run of the program. View Print Receipt displays a receipt for the most recent sale for the selected pump. If the pump has more than one pump, then the pump number must be selected first. The receipt includes the name of the store, date and time, pump identifier, gallons, fuel type, and price which includes the 9 tenths per gallon. The receipt also includes the amount of deposit, sale, change, and a message on the bottom. Thank you very much. Come again soon. There are buttons at the bottom for print and close. The receipt is actually created. It's an image that includes the border. The print routine needs to print an image when printing the receipt. The view print log file displays the log file that is saved in the user's documents log file folder. Log files are important because they're used to keep track of anything important that happens and who is responsible. The log file has two different types of records, a record of each sale and a record of every time the fuel prices are changed. It is the log file that is searched when displaying the receipt of the last sale for the selected pump. The log file is also searched when the program is first started to retrieve the prices for the gasoline and diesel. This way, the prices are retained from one run of the program and when the program is run again. The Edit menu has two options for Edit Prices and Add a Pump. The Edit Prices selection brings up a dialog box that gives the user the ability to change the prices of the gasoline and diesel. The user's entries are validated to make sure they are positive and numeric. When the Accept button is clicked, the prices are updated on the store sign and the price updates are saved in the log file. The Add a Pump does not have the ellipses because that selection does not bring up a dialog box. Pumps are implemented as objects. That way it is very easy to add a new pump. Just instantiate another pump object. A constant in the program named Max Pumps is set equal 4 because there is only room for 4 pumps on most computer screens. Each time a pump is added, deposit, change, and clear controls are added below the area on the screen for the store, and the pump number is displayed on top of the pump. Although it may appear that these controls belong to the store, they logically are really part of each pump. The Help menu only has one selection option, About. When About is clicked, it displays a dialog box that contains information about the program and instructions on how to use the program. Let's look closely at the pump. It has label controls for the pump number, amount of sale, gallons delivered, and price per gallon. Buttons are provided for the three grades of fuel and a button that controls the operation of the pump. The pump is implemented as a state machine. The term state most closely relates to the observable states of matter such as solid, liquid, gas, or plasma rather than the states such as California, Florida, Texas, etc. The states can be easily identified by the text on the pump's control button. The deposit state shows deposit dollar sign select fuel. 
the ready state shows start, the pumping state shows stop, and the stopped state shows sell complete. The progress from one state to another is as follow. From deposit to ready, cash deposited at the store and a fuel type selected at the pump. The progression from ready to pumping occurs when the pump's control button showing start is clicked. Progressing from pumping to stopped occurs when the pump's control button showing stop is clicked or fuel delivery is complete. And any state can go back to deposit when the clear button at the store is clicked. The project uses several Java FX panes to organize the pieces of the display. A V-Box named Root contains the entire display, including menu bar, title using an H-Box, store, and pumps. A grid pane named Store and Pumps holds the store and initially only one pump. A V-Box is used to hold the store and the deposit and change controls. A grid pane holds the deposit and change controls. Let's see what happens with four pumps to make sure they are all running independently. Deposit $6 in the first pump and select 87 octane. Deposit $8 in the second pump and select 91 octane. Deposit uh, $4 in the third pump and select diesel and put in $5 in the last pump and select 87 octane again. Okay, on your mark. Get set, go. Start, 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 start. And they're off and running. And it looks like it's coming in the beginning. Oh, cell complete pump number three. Spell number one. And number four. And finally, in the end, pump number two is the last place. Well, we can see that each of the pumps is running independently. And that can happen easily because they are all implemented as objects. This concludes the first part of the description for the Java FX pump simulator.